Worship County Baptist Church for our Thanksgiving service. We are so thankful that you are here, and we have so much to be thankful for to the Lord our God. Let's uh, let's stand. We're going to open our service tonight by singing hymn number 624. We're going to be taking some testimonies and playing uh, some of your favorite hymns. So if you could be thinking about that, uh, a hymn and a, a verse or a hymn and a quick testimony about something you're thankful for, uh, that would be great. We'll do that for a little bit to start our service. 624, count your blessings. chance to find it and then you can give your testimony that would be extremely helpful so testimony and a hymn let's start to my right your left yes lucy Thank you. 
team. Um, Quick just, testimony. I just thank the Lord for His grace that's gotten us through this year. Amen. You know, with all that's going on. And, yeah. Amen. You know, and, and I was thinking about this uh, when, when Lucy was giving her testimony. You know, all things work together for good. Amen. And no matter what's going on, God uses it for His glory. Amen. Amen. 814 wonderful grace of Jesus. We'll sing the first verse. Oh, my God. 
vertical piece, 391. 391? That's what it said on my side. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? 591. Okay. Thank you. A voice from beyond told me. Oh, wonderful piece. Here we go. Do you have a testimony, Mrs. White? My husband told me to say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so blessed to have him as a husband. <laughs> certainly does. Let's sing the first verse of Wonderful Beats.
test our piano players tonight. Maybe not easy then. Do you have that up there, Jeff? Yeah, it's only the bridge. I don't think we have that in our hymnals. Sorry. <laughs> if, if, yes, Mimi. I'm sorry, Lucy. That it's not in the hymnal. Get it. Chicken. Got that right. Yes. Four seventeen. 17, it is well with my soul. Do you have a testimony? <coughs> Let's sing the first and last verse of it. It is well with my soul.
keeps me singing 434. Testimony? Uh, too many. Um, I'm grateful for salvation. I'm grateful for a Bible teaching, Bible believing church, our church. And there's too many crazy things going on in my life. I don't have to go in detail, but the Lord is sovereign. Amen. And I praise Him for that. Amen. 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 He keeps me singing 434.
799, uh, made a mind to Christ my Savior, verse 5 and 6. Verses 5 and 6, yep, do you have a testimony? Uh, just for, yeah, again, for the year, uh, it's good that we don't know what's going to happen before it starts, but we probably wouldn't want to do it. Uh, but just for the, our kids all get married, my mother passing away, and just the craziness of the year. Uh, it's kind of good that we were running a race because we didn't have time to think about it all. Uh, so I just thank God that he was there and enabled us to have each one happen the way it was supposed to, I guess, according to him, Amen. and just to enjoy Amen. everything. Amen. Uh, the question I have for you is, do you want to come up and sing this with me? Because I don't think I know this song. <laughs> it's easy, good. I'll take the word for it. If not, you learn something new every day. Amen. Just, let's stand, let's stretch. This is the last song before the Master comes and hurry through this. several uh, uh, descriptors, if you will, of all that God is to us and what he does in our life and a uh, passage of scripture to go along with that and just allow the Lord to speak to us uh, and remind us of the great privilege we have to be able to just give thanks unto the Lord. Yeah. Psalm 18 and verse 49 says, Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be together tonight. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this time of the year where we do just kind of uh, take a step backwards and uh, just take some, a break in life and just think about and ponder in our hearts uh, the many ways that you have blessed us, the many reasons that we can give thanks uh, and uh, praise unto our God. And Lord, we're just thankful uh, for this great psalm that David wrote and reminds us, Lord, to make that decision, a conscious decision, Amen. I will give thanks. Amen. And so I pray that you bless our study together tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Very interesting verse. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. And I think it's so interesting that he says that he would give thanks among the heathen. And uh, we're surrounded by the unsaved all the time. And one thing they need to witness and see in us is a spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving yeah, and praise good. unto our God. And uh, so David, we know, wrote this Psalm 18. And really, he wrote it after God had given him a great victory and delivered him in a powerful way uh, from all of his men, uh, enemies. You know, this is Psalm 18 it's one of my favorite psalms, and uh, there's so many promises, so many uh, descriptors in this in reference to all that God is to us. Because It's a psalm, or a song, if you will, a song of victory. And the songs that we're singing tonight together, they're, they're, uh, we're blessed by those things. We're, they're our favorite songs. Each of us have different favorite songs, but every one of those songs speak about some victories that God has brought in our life. And as we read through Psalm 18, we're reminded of the great victories that God has given to us. You know, Warren Worsby uh, said this, It is easier to sing after the victory, 
it takes faith to sing during the battle. Amen. And uh, certainly David knew what it was to have to fight many battles. Uh, he knew what it was for his own men to turn their backs on him. He knew what it was to be alone. Uh, but he certainly also understood that he could be encouraged in the Lord his God. Amen. And uh, whether he was in the battle or whether it was after the battle, uh, he acknowledged the fact that he had victory. And I want you to know that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us tonight. Amen. And so I will give thanks and I'll give praise unto the Lord. Uh, our text verse, verse 49, really is David's conclusion to the whole psalm. In verse 49, he says, just says, therefore. Whenever you read the word therefore, when you're reading the Bible, remember uh, God is wanting you to look back at something that was said beforehand. Mm -hmm. And uh, so based on everything that David has said in this psalm, his conclusion is just simply this, I, I will give thanks unto the Lord. And uh, so uh, he not only acknowledges that he was going to give thanks, but we also see that he said he's going to sing praises. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thee. Tonight, we've testified of the goodness of God. We've sung songs tonight to be able to sing praises unto the Lord. And that's exactly what David is talking about in this psalm in rejoicing in the goodness of his God. But not only is he rejoicing and singing praises in reference to what God had done in his life in the past, but he is rejoicing and with hope looking forward to what God is going to do in the future. And uh, it, I, I love testifying. I love thinking about reminiscing about things that have happened in the past, but we don't live in the past. Amen. You can't change the past. And, uh, and so we need to look forward to what it is that God's going to do. The past reminds us that God can do it. Amen. And, uh, uh, and uh, I was praying about my message I'm going to preach on Sunday. And um, I don't, I'm not going to give you the title. I'm just going to give you the title. I going to give you the title. But <laughs> no, I'm going, the title is We Are Able. And then there's others who said we're not able. So which is your statement? Are we able or are we not able? able. And so we think about the, the uh, response of David is, is a positive response because he's just reminding himself of what God did in the past. And, and because of what God did in the, pa in the past, he lists all these character traits of his God. But he doesn't stop there. He's looking forward that that God, that same God, is going to be doing miraculous things in his life. And so when we talk about giving thanks, it's not just remembering what's happened in the past. It's not just relishing the present, what we're enabled, uh, enabled to enjoy, but it's looking beyond that. Amen. And what is God going to do tomorrow? What is God going to do with my life for the next five years? What is he going to do for the next 20 years? And uh, so David is looking that I, I will give thanks. So here's some thoughts, just some uh, descriptions in the Psalms. I actually lined the Psalms up that you can turn your Bible very easily to get to the Psalms. But I also put the verses on the screen. So whatever you're comfortable with, uh, you do that tonight. First of all, I will give thanks because of sanctification. Sanctification. Sanctification is not a word that many people like to talk about nowadays. Sanctification just simply means to be set apart. Uh, it carries with the idea that God has separated us. He set us apart from our sin, but he has also set us apart unto himself. And so I'm thankful tonight. I will praise God and I will give thanks to the Lord because of his sanctification. In Psalm 30 and verse 4, says, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Amen. That word holiness there is this word used for sanctification. And when we talk about sanctification, we're talking about the holiness of God that is in us. I'm thankful that Jesus removed my sin, the filthiness in my life, and he imputed to me his righteousness. Amen. And that's what sanctification is. God imputing that 
holiness and that righteousness in us, which enables us to be able to live that out for the glory of God. And so I can live a separated life. I don't need to be overcome and distraught with the world. I can, I'll just thank the Lord that he has enabled me to be able to walk with him and fellowship with him and enjoy his whole character as far as the righteousness that is imputed. So sanctification, we ought to give thanks for sanctification. We ought to give thanks for adoration. Adoration just really carries with the idea of being able to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And you know, before I got saved, I would use the name of Jesus all the time, but it wasn't in adoration. <laughs> and it, it was in uh, using his name as a curse word. And I'm thankful tonight that God saved me and he's given me a spirit of adorning him, yes. rejoicing in who he is. And adoration, Psalm 30, verse 12, says to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen. And so this idea of adoring Christ, he said, I will not be silent. You know, uh, uh, over the years I've had different people tell me I get too excited sometimes. <laughs> and uh, I remember when I first served church service, we started uh, Gospel Light Baptist Church. A lady came out to church and uh, boy, did she get upset with me. And uh, I preached a message. My very first message I preached in ministry was, you must be born again, John 3, 3. Amen. And, uh, and I, I figured, well, we're going to have all kinds of visitors there. We're going to have people there that are not saved. Uh, people haven't, maybe haven't heard the gospel. So I'm going to preach right at the beginning, you must be uh, born again. And uh, boy, that woman got mad at me. Woo. My goodness, I went and followed up on people that were there. I went to visit her, and, and boy, she went up one side of me and down the other side. Now, you would think a mature Christian, because that's what she declared herself to be, a mature Christian would want it to encourage a young preacher boy that's just getting started out in ministry. Uh, she wasn't worried about that at all. And I mean, she went up one side of me and down the other side, and she was yelling at me. And she told me, she said, I'll tell you one thing, I don't see Jesus in the Bible like that. You shouting and carrying on and all of this, that, and the other. And I just finally told her, I said, Well, ma'am, I just want you to know that God put a fire in my bones, and I'm excited about Jesus Christ. And I'm thrilled that I'm saved, and I'm excited I'm going to heaven. And I told her, I said, I want you to know this. I want you to come back to church. I really do want you to come back to church. But I want you to understand that when you come, you're going to see me preaching exactly the same way. Amen. So adoration, being excited, Amen. being stirred up, refusing to be silent uh, because the Lord is my God. Amen. And so we adore him. And uh, we don't adore men. We don't adore me movements. We adore the Lord Jesus Christ. We exalt him and lift him up. So I'm thankful tonight for sanctification and adoration. I'm thankful tonight for corporation. You got to figure it out. I go with a shin on the end. Amen. Get me all back. <laughs> you say corporation. What has that got to do with anything? That's all of us coming together. We're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. People say, well, I can worship the Lord my own way. I don't need to be in church. No, the Bible says we're to gather together. Why did Jesus say where two or three are gathered together? I'll be in the midst. And so this ability to be corporately drawn together, Psalm 35 in verse 18 says, I will give thanks uh, in the great congregation." I will praise thee among much people. Yes, I'm thankful for that. I, I think the more you get together, the greater your praise can come. Amen. Not that it's necessary to have a great number together to praise God, Amen. but I just know this, iron sharpeneth iron. Amen. And when I hear someone else singing out to the Lord, it stirs me up, makes me want to sing. Amen. If I hear someone shout amen, I'm ready to shout glory. Amen. amen. And uh, I, I tell you, I, I, 
I wasn't used to church like that. I mean, when I went to Bible college, I remember they had a, a bus conference down at Bobby Robinson's church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And uh, I've never seen anything like that. These southern churches, they let loose. I'm telling you that right now. And I was in Bible college. I mean, I was only saved a year. And I went down there. I had a cold and my nose was running. We didn't have any Kleenexes. I didn't have a handkerchief. So I had this roll of toilet paper. And I'm, I'm, blowing, I'm blowing my nose. Hey, man. And I'm blowing my nose. I mean, those people were letting loose down there, shouting amen, waving their handkerchiefs in the air. I mean, one old boy got up and went running around the church. I was like, what in the world is this? I've never seen this before. But I want to tell you this reserve of young guy that's just going to start out in ministry, I got into that pretty good. Amen. 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 It's always easier to shout amen if somebody's shouting amen with you. Amen. amen. Sometimes we don't we don't like that when somebody shouts amen and everybody looks. You know? <laughs> when they look at you, look at them back. Amen. 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 I'm, ta I'm talking about as a group of people, Amen. the great congregation of God, the people of God coming together, knowing that we're all focused on the same thing. Amen. We're all worshiping the same person. Amen. We're all longing for the same experience. Amen. We're all being moved by the same spirit of Amen. God. I'm telling you, something happens when there's cooperation with the corporation. Amen. 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 That's good preaching. Amen. I'll give thanks. Amen. Amen. I'll give thanks for presentation. Amen. You know one thing, when you go out to a nice restaurant, you know, they, I don't know why they think they're good restaurants. They come out and they give you these little tiny portions of meat like that. And they got all this fancy stuff on there. And it's like, well, it's all about the presentation. No, it's not. Put an unreal steak on there. Amen? Amen. <laughs> presentation. In other words, Psalm 75 and 1 says, Unto thee, O God, do I give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near thy wondrous works declared. That's Amen. a presentation. Amen. And I like it when God shows up and he shows us something. Amen. 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 I love it when I'm reading the word of God. And it's a passage of scripture I've read over and over again. And it's a passage that I've preached on over and over again. And I read through it and God shows me something else. Yep. When I, when I see it, I just say, thank you, Lord, for showing me that. Presentation. God presents himself to us, and because he presents himself to us, we say, okay, Lord, I'm going to give thanks for you. I see not only presentation, but I see generations. In other words, that this, this God that we worship is the God of generations in the past. But he's also the God of the generations in the future. Amen. I don't know why we get this mindset that because times have changed and, and time is marching on, that all of a sudden our whole concept of who God is has to be changed. No, God is our God from generation to generation. Psalm 9, uh, 79 and 13 says, So we, thy people and sheep of thy pasture, will give thanks forever. Amen. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Yes. Our world that we live in, they like to label us baby boomers, Generation X and Millennials and Z and all this. What are they going to do when they, when they run out of the alphabet, you know? And uh, but, whoa, 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 whoa. It's still generation to generation to generation. We ought to be praising our God. Our teenagers ought to rejoice in God. Amen. Our young children, our little children ought to be rejoicing in God. They ought to be walking around singing Christian songs. Amen. They ought to be rejoicing that God has got something great for their life 
and their interest is more of what God's will is for me than it is to get a degree or get an education or get a career and get money. It's more important to be in the center of God's will. If it's important for me, bless God, it's important for the next generation. Amen. Amen. I'll give you thanks, Lord. That generation to generation to generation. My great grandmother was a Christian. I didn't know it. I didn't know what was different about her. I still struggle with that. Why didn't she be more aggressive in witnessing to us? And uh, um, my grandmother was a Christian. My mother was a Christian. I'm glad that I got saved and I'm a Christian. Amen. It can pass the generation, the generation, the generation. We can be thankful that God's grace goes from one generation to the next. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see not only that, but I see exaltation. Exaltation. Psalm 92 and 1 says it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's all right. It's okay to be say I'm thankful to God. Thank you. It's all right to talk to your neighbors, and as they're talking, you say, well, I'm just thankful to my God for what he's done with me. It's all right to be on the job and say, well, I'm just thankful that I'm a Christian, that I got saved. And uh, I, I remember when I was in Bible college, I took a man from Detroit Airport all the way up to Flint, Michigan, and uh, I started witnessing him. He was a businessman from Texas. And I just started talking to him. He was like, hey, what are you out here for? You know, you said you're from New Jersey. And I told him I'm going to Bible college. And I just started sharing my testimony with him. And uh, I just told him, I said, you know what? God's been good to me. God saved me. And I mean, he changed my life. And I was just giving my whole testimony. And God just gripped my heart. I started weeping. And I said, I'm sorry. I don't want to embarrass you. I said, but God's been great to me. Amen. And God has God's Amen. delivered my soul from such Amen. a wicked life. God's called me in the ministry. I, I'll tell you, God's been providing for me. And I, I'll never forget that man. Uh, when uh, um, I got to the motel in Flint, Michigan, to drop him off, he told me this. I, he said, you know, I've been a Catholic for 45 years in my life. And he said, I have never heard anything as so solid and so secure and so hopeful as what you just told me. Amen. And he said, Amen. you know, he told me he was going to trust Christ as a Savior. Amen. Uh, you know, if we'll exalt the Lord, Amen. if we'll talk about how good he is, if we'll make much of God, if, if, if God will be more than just the higher power, Amen. but if he'll be personally our Father, and we present him as our father. We exalt him in that kind of role. I'm going to tell you, you'll get people's interest. And you'll stir them up. So I'll give thanks by exalting Christ. Then, then I see salvation. Salvation. Psalm 106 and 1 says, Praise you the Lord. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Salvation. I'm glad that God saved me when he saved me. And I'm glad through the years I've been able to see God save other people that I've been able to talk to. I'm glad that in, even in 2020, with all the issues and all the problems and all the difficulties we've had to deal with, God is still in the business of saving people. Amen. 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 So thank the Lord for salvation. Sometimes people say, I don't have a testimony. Why do you got a testimony? Amen. You got at least one if you're saved, you got a testimony. Amen. I'm glad the Lord saved me. You know the interesting thing about the Apostle Paul, when you study his life, everywhere he went, he told them about how he met the Lord on the road, Damascus Road, Amen. and he got saved. That's right. Every, everywhere he went. I remember hearing an old preacher years ago when I was, I think I was in Bible college, I don't know, it might have been at a conference, but they were talking about salvation and they said this about old Bob Jones Sr. Down at Bob Jones University was started by him. And they said this about Bob Jones Sr. There was a great meeting, hundreds and hundreds of preachers there. And they wanted Bob Jones Sr. to preach. And his son went over to him and said, Dad, they want you to preach. He said, what do you want, son? And he was elderly. He was having 
uh, intellectual problems and things. And they, he said, Dad, they want you to preach. And so they got him up. A couple guys helped him up to the pulpit. I hope I'm still preaching when I need Amen. people to help me up to the pulpit. Amen. <laughs> uh, don't worry about me once I get here. Amen. <laughs> Just get me here. Amen. I'll hang on for the ride while I'm Amen. preaching. Don't you worry about that. But anyway, they got him to the pulpit. And uh, he started out, he said, you know, I never will forget when I was just a little lad, a young boy. He said, down, and he mentioned the state, he said, I was in an old revival meeting, and that preacher at the end of the meeting uh, gave an invitation for us to come forward and receive Christ as their Savior. And I got up and walked down that old sawdust trail. Amen. These have those camp meetings, they have yeah, sawdust yeah. trails. He said, I got out of my seat, went down that old sawdust trail, and trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Amen. And everybody shouting, amen, amen. And then he was sitting there, and he thought for a minute, and he said, you know, I never will forget when just as a young lad, I heard the gospel preached in an old revival meeting, and I walked down an old sawdust trail. Amen. And I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I've never got over that. And so he stood there for about a minute, Amen. and then he started again. He said, you know, I never will forget. And the old, one of the preachers out in the audience said, bless God, Brother Bob may not know where he is, but he knows where he's been. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you tonight, that you never get over the salvation of God. Amen. What a testimony we have. Amen. I will give thanks for salvation. Thank you, Savior. Amen. Harry Ironside said this. We would, worry, we would worry less if we praised more. Amen. Thanksgiving is the enemy of discontent and dissatisfaction. So I just feel like I need to complain about something. <laughs> well, I won't just change that over. So I just need to praise God about something. Amen. Amen. You know, I just got to complain because, I, you know, you just don't understand what I'm going through. Why don't you just say, well, I got to stop for a little bit and praise the Lord. Amen. Because Amen. God's let me go through this situation. Amen. I'm telling you right now, discontentment about the Christian life would be eliminated in the life of believers if we had a spirit of thanksgiving and praise to God Almighty. I like what Henry Ward Beecher said. He said, pride slays thanksgiving, but a humble mind is the soil out of which thanks naturally grows. Oh, don't get puffed up in your pride. Don't think you should have more than what you have. Don't think you should have more acknowledgement or recognition than you should have. And Lord Jesus Christ deserves all the accolades Amen. and all the acknowledgement Amen. and all the exaltation. And let pride be driven out of your heart and let your humble spirit become the soil, the means of nourishment, of birthing, thanksgiving, and praise out of your heart. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said this. We pray for the big things and forget to give thanks for the ordinary, small, and yet not really small gifts. How can God entrust great things to one who will not thankfully receive from him the little things? Amen. You know, a great old hit song, Little is Much, when God is in it. Amen. I want to testify tonight that Amen. yes, little yes. is much when God is in it. Right. It is not about how big you are. It's not about how much you have. It's about how big your God is and how much he can bestow upon you. I just wondered many times if I just missed out on the blessings of God because I was looking for something big and God had something small that he wanted to put into my life that it might blossom for the glory of God. Amen. Old David just said this, therefore, based on all these things, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. We serve a glorious God. Amen. And this week is Thanksgiving, and as 
we get ready to have Thanksgiving praise together. Amen. Don't worry about the governor. <laughs> He's not going to come after you. Amen. Don't worry about six people or ten people. <laughs> Don't be like the preachers every Sunday. We keep counting everybody. We look, All right, no, so and so usually sits in that seat back there. It's empty. Where's they at? No, don't do that. Amen. Thank you. Just gather together yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Gather together and be thankful for exactly. how God has blessed us and Amen. he has moved upon I'm telling you, God has been so good to us. Amen. I think of all this stuff that's going on in the world with COVID and everything else, you, and, and I think of how our Christian school's running, I think of how our church is operating, I think of everything that is taking place and going on, I see the authority, the powerful protection of the hand of God embracing us and holding on to us. And I'm telling you, we got something to be able to thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is worthy of all of our Amen. friends. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and thank him to thank you. My God, I come to you, I thank you. I Amen. praise you so much. I could stand here all night for the next several nights Amen. and acknowledge the many ways that you have blessed us. So God, give us that spirit of praise and thanksgiving Amen. continually every day, not just at Thanksgiving time, but may that be a part of our very makeup of who we are as we thank and glorify the eternal Son of God. Pray for your blessing on each person who's here, those that are watching live stream. Uh, God, just fill us with a different spirit. Remove the fear, remove the anxiety, the anxiousness, the doubting, uh, all these things, Lord. I just pray that you'd give us a spirit of hope, uh, excitement, expectation, uh, rejoicing in all that you are to us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God for being here tonight. You have your prayer sheet. Um, is there anything that we need to add to the prayer sheet? Maybe you forgot to call in and that we want, don't want to leave that off. Is there anything at all? Uh, yes, Pam. Uh, yeah, I have this on searching, but uh, please pray for Frank in Colorado. He has COVID and okay. he's in ICU in the hospital. My daughter-in-law's father. Okay, so, so pray, pray for, for Okay, so pray for Faye that's in uh, Colorado. Uh, he has COVID and he needs to be saved. So pray for healing and pray for his salvation. Amen. Anything else we need to add? Yes, Mary. Uh, Don, and he's on hospice in ICU. Who's that? What? His name is Don. Don? Don. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he used to come here uh, years ago and he's going to. Okay. All right. All right. And he'd say he's on hospice? All right, so let's pray for Don as hospice, and uh, that God will bring healing. God will give peace. God will give grace at this time Amen. in his life. Amen. Anything else? Yes. I was talking to the pastor from the church that I was part of in California, and I was just hearing about how hard their community was hit by the fires. There's still fires over there, but pretty wow. much, you know, even if their their home wasn't destroyed, it's still there's just so much damage. And, um, but, but God's still been working and people have gotten saved and they're just being discipled and baptized. So, so good things are happening, but it's Amen. a really still hard time. There's a lot of people that lost everything. Amen. Well, let's keep praying for uh, uh, folks out in California where these fires were. And uh, certainly God is doing the work. There's still people getting saved and baptized and growing in the Lord. But a lot of people have lost everything because of those fires. So let's pray that God will give complete deliverance there and thank the Lord uh, that he can protect and move in spite of those things. Anything else? All right. Let's, I'm sorry, Sue. Um, for Ken's cousin, Patty, she has some heart problems that they wanted to do surgery on, but she's got a lot of other health con uh, conditions, other problems that they can't do the surgery. And um, they're just trying to use medication now, but they're not sure if it's going to help or not. So. Okay, so that's Addie? Patty. Patty. My wife keeps telling me I can't hear it. <laughs> All right, so pray for Patty as uh, she needs some surgery, has other issues, uh, but God can take care of all those things. Amen. So let's pray that God will give complete healing and deliverance there. 
All right. Anything else? Okay. Well, we're glad to have you here tonight. You're welcome to stay and pray and lift these folks up before the Lord. But through your devotion time throughout the week, make sure to go through the prayer list and pray for these folks that God will move in a special way. Have a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you all on Sunday. Amen. I'm looking forward to the preacher preaching Sunday. I know you're going to have a lot of God bless you.